Hello, as you know, my name is Clinton the Genius, and today we are going to start with perfect hashing. This is tutorial six. I'm actually very excited about this uh, topic. The reason is because uh, this perfect hashing guarantees zero collision. So is it not amazing that the hashing uh, type of hashing guarantees zero collision? And let's now see how it works. If you've not subscribed, I'm just trying to remind you to subscribe to my channel so you get notified when I make new lessons. All right, so how really does perfect hashing work? Let's take some introductory comments about perfect hashing. Perfect hashing is actually very efficient if data is close to static and there are no much insertions and deletions. So what are we talking about? When there are no more insertions, so I'm going to complete it and deletions. then perfect hashing will be very efficient. So in what kind of uh, uh, scenario or application do we have uh, no much insertions or deletions or where data is static? We can think of a dictionary. Dictionary. So in case of dictionary, when you have the English dictionary, dictionary let's say a Webster dictionary, you actually don't uh, insert words or delete words into a dictionary. You mainly use the dictionary to search for words and the meanings. So in this case, we can say the data is close to static. In this case, perfect session works really well. Basically, we can also have uh, data might be inserted maybe after many years, some, some new English words comes in and may be put into dictionary. But that doesn't happen so often, so we can actually uh, safely assume that the data is uh, close to static, so we can employ perfect hashing. All right, so um, what really happens with, with uh, perfect hashing? Perfect hashing has a worst case constant search time. So what we are saying here is uh, search time is constant and is order of uh, one. So order of one means constant search time. Whatever, uh, no matter how many uh, amount of data or keys is stored in this uh, uh, hash table, if perfect hashing is used, then the worst case search time will be order of one, which will be constant, and that will be very great. Secondly, worst case space, uh, the space uh, to occupy will also be a linear, will be linear, so it will be order of n, and that makes sense because. Uh, the more you add items into the table, the more the space grows, and that is also good. So in this case, we have uh, linear linear uh, space. Because when you are talking about data structure, you are interested in uh, memory and also time. Yeah. So, so that's why you have here you have space complexity, space complexity, and here you have what time complexity. So, and both of them complexity, okay, both of them is represented by the big O notation. And then, how long does it take to build up a perfect hash table? It takes polynomial build time. So you already know that polynomial build time is uh, order of what? Order of n squared. So, and this will be with high probability. So this is basic things about uh, perfect hashing. You can take them down in your note and I think it's very clear. So we are going to move on to see how exactly perfect hashing work. We want to demonstrate it using or universe and the hash tables. Perfect hashing makes use of two level hashing. So we have level one and level two. So think of it that there are two levels. So the first one is H1 and the second one is H2. So the first one is similar to hashing by chaining. What it means is that you hash items into the hash table and then when it overflows or two items gets into the same place, you actually move them to a second location. In case of chaining, we use a linked list, but in case of uh, in case of perfect hashing or two level hashing, we are going to use another hash table instead of 
a linked list. So let's see how it works. So let's assume we have universe of keys uh, in this place. So we have keys k1, k2 that we want to hash into a hash table, k4, k5. So in the first level of the hashing, we'll use h1 to hash these keys into these locations. So what we'll have will be uh, h of k1, let's say we'll hash into uh, the location, and let's say this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And in this case, m is equal to what? m is equal to 6, right? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That is fine. So when two items now hash into the same location, let's say, let me I, I indicate this one. What is going to happen is that we will need another hash table. So in the second level hashing, or in the second level table, we'll have another hash function, h2. So where is this subscript 0 coming from? h2 of 0. So in the same way, if we have another table, we'll have the h2 of 3. So as you mean, we have items hashing into this place. We'll have h2. Or this time subscript 3 and so on and so forth and then we have h2 uh, of 6 that is for this place so this is the how it works and the thing is that no collision will occur uh, that is a claim in the second level so this guarantees that there will be zero collision in the second level. But it's easy to just say we, we have to prove it. So this is what we are going to do in the next tutorial, tutorial 7. We are going to prove this. I actually want you to understand exactly what a perfect passion is all about. And then we actually go to the analytic stuff in the next tutorial, tutorial 7, so that we actually pr uh, prove that there will be uh, zero co collision for perfect passion in level two i'd like to thank you for viewing i would also like to uh, encourage you to continue learning uh, wish you success in your learning and uh, remember to subscribe if you've not subscribed and let me know if there is something you need to learn more or challenges you have or topic you would like me to make some lessons on and i'll write i'll be right there for you